Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and I'm taking another trip back to the realm of Gondor today and the wilds of Ithilien by tackling Damrod, one of Faramir's most trusted rangers, constant defender of the wilderness and city of Vosgiliath. I opted for a slightly different approach for Damrod, working with a lot more autumnal colours, a rich variety of browns and muted pastels to give him more of a standout appearance when alongside his ranger kin. The model was assembled, cleaned and undercoated with Chaos Black Spray prior to painting. What we can say here as well is don't do what we did and get super excited building the model. It's a lot easier to paint the ruins if they're not attached to the base at the time. We're just a little bit excitable. Well, enough of me jabbering on again. Brush is ready, guys, and let's get painting. Base colours. I'm going to start by base coating the face with Bugman's Glow. The hair and beard were then base coated with dryer bark. Damrod's tunic was base coated with a three part mix of Doomball Brown, Rhinox Hide, and Abaddon Black. The upper tunic area and the quiver were base coated with a 1 to 2 ratio mix of Stegodon Scale Green and Abaddon Black. The cloak was then base coated with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of Mournfang Brown and Galvorback Red. The trousers, boots and sleeves were base coated with a 1 to 2 ratio mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Abaddon Black. The gloves were then carefully picked out using Rhinox Hide. And the arm braces and boot trim carefully picked out with a 50 50 mix of Doom Ball Brown and Rhinox Hide. That's it, finally, all the base coats I can get in place at this stage are done. Flesh. The face was then layered up with a mix of Buckman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. A quick wash of diluted Reichland Flesh Shade was then applied to create definition within the skin. Once the wash was dry, continue layering up the skin tones using pure Cadian flesh tone, leaving the wash showing in the recesses. Now I'm going to start highlighting up the skin with a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Cadian flesh tone and Kislev flesh. Increasing the concentration of Kislev Flesh in the mix for the final highlight stage. You can push this further if you want, but do be careful not to overwork the tones of the skin. The eyes were then painted in using Abaddon Black. Then two dots of Pallid Witch Flesh either side were added to finish off the pupils. Hair.
The hair and beard were given a wash with Agrax Lotionade. I want to try and desaturate Danrod's hair a bit to contrast the other browns. So to do this, I started layering up with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of dry bark and paint blade brown. Then increasing the concentration of bone blade brown in the mix gradually for the next layer stage, focusing on separating out and defining the individual strands of hair and creating a nice texture over the beard. To start the highlights, add Kids Left Flesh in the mix and continue pushing the definition of your layers further keeping your highlight application super tight and controlled to get the best, most authentic flow to the hair. Again, increasing the amount of kids left flesh in the mix for the final highlight stage. And once you're happy with how this looks, a glaze of thinned down seraphim sepia was applied all over. Leather tunic. I want to try and create a realistic, worn look to the tunic, so the mix gets slightly complicated as I progress through here. But to start off with, apply a manual, targeted shade with a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide and Abaddon Black. This will darken the recesses really quickly and really effectively. The shading was then pushed a little bit further by applying a thorough wash all over the tunic with Agrax Surf Shade. I then brought up the vibrancy of the leather gradually by adding in scrag brown into the base coat mix. The richness of the scrag brown combined with the quite dark chocolatey brown used for the base coat will help reinforce this genuine worn leather look that we're trying to get. Continue to increase the amount of scrag brown in the mix and then you have an approximate 50-50 split between the scrag and the base coat tunic mix. Any more scrag than this and I'm at risk of overblowing and oversaturating the tones of the leather, which we don't want to happen. To get that slightly more cracked and gnarled look, Whilst also complementing the tonal progression, I'm going to start adding ungore flesh in an approximate quarter to third amount to the overall mix. This stage is kind of down to your preference and how much you want to bring up the finished tone and look of the leather. I continued adding ungore flesh until it made up approximately half of the overall mixture as I felt this gave the best overall look to the finished tunic. Finally, a glaze with right and flesh shade was applied to tie in all the layers and highlights together. Black leathers. The quiver and black leathers were given a wash using null oil.
increasing the amount of staggered on scale green in the base coat mix, apply this as a layer next, leaving the null oil showing in the recesses. Here you can see I'm slowly bringing the tone of the blacks up very subtly by adding in Baharoth Blue, which will react and complement the Stegadon scale in the base mix whilst also naturally lighting the overall mix. For the highlight stages, I started adding Ulthran Grey into the overall mix, firstly at a 3 to 1 approximate ratio. Then gradually working my way up to a 50-50 split, roughly with the gradual addition of more Ulthran in the mix. Cloak. Now for yet another exercise in brown variation. This model probably uses nearly the whole range of Citadel Browns. To start off, however, apply a manual shade to the recesses of the cloak with a 50-50 mix of Mournfang Brown and Galvorback Red. Now I'm jumping straight to the addition of Deathclaw Brown in the mix, which is quite a stark addition, but this will bring up the tone of the cloak quicker and provide a nice degree of contrast against some of the more muted areas of brown that have already been finished. Again, increasing the amount of death in the mix until you're working with an approximate 50-50 split mix leading up to the highlight stages. The cloak will now start showing a really lovely natural orange look, which I want to try and reinforce and brighten further, but without overpowering the tunic and the other leathers. To do this, I added some Luganath orange into the mix. This will have the same effect that the Baharoth had in the black leathers, and will naturally lighten the hue of the cloak, leading into the final highlight stage. at which point Kislev Flesh was added to the mix and applied as an extreme edge highlight just to make the edges and crest of the cloak pop that little bit more and represent where the light will be hitting most prominently. When you're happy with how the cloak is looking, apply a glaze all over with heavily diluted Agrax shade. Black cloth, boots and gloves. Conversely to the previous stages, this stage has a relatively simple recipe. To start off with, layer up the black cloth, boots and trousers with a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Abaddon Black. Continue adding Storm Vermin in gradual increments for each layer stage until you reach the final highlight stage which will be using pure Storm Vermin Fur. The gloves were then given a quick highlight using Knight's Crest or Flesh. And were then washed very quickly with Agrax Surf Shade.
braces and boot trim. The braces and boot trim are given an initial wash with Agrax Earthshade. These were then layered over with a 50-50 mix of Tuscore Fur and the original Doom Ball Rhinox Hide Mix. Then, progressing onto the highlights by adding Screaming Skull to the mix, focusing mainly here on picking out the embossed detail over the top of the braces. Further framing the embossing and edges of the leathers here by adding even more Screaming Skull to the mix. straps and wood. The straps, bow, arrow and arrows in the quiver were base coated using dry bark. Highlight was then applied using pure gore thought brown. At this stage too, I created the subtle wood grain effect down the length of the bow, applying the paint in thin, almost random streaks. I then frame the outer sections of all the belts and straps with a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Gawthor Brown and Pallet Witch Flesh. Metals and Bronze The belt buckle and bronze details were then carefully picked out with Rune Lord Blast. Followed up with a quick, very targeted wash with Agrax Earthshade. And finally, dot highlighted with Canoptic Alloy. The arrowhead and quiver details were painted in carefully using lead belcher. And again carefully highlighted up using runefang steel. Arrow fletching. The arrow fletchings were picked out using XV88. Layered up next using the messy desert.
and finally dot highlighted using pure angle flesh. Scenic base. Now I did the super smart thing here and got way too excited when building the model. So the ruins have been attached to the base pre-painting. So this stage was fairly challenging for me. If you've done the same, all I can advise is take your time and apply the paint super carefully here. The ruins, however, were given a base coat with a 50-50 mix of Rakarth Flesh and Gracia, applied in several thin coats to get nice smooth coverage. The silicon and grey contrast was then applied all over the ruins to provide a nice authentic sense of shadow and depth. A heavy dry brush was then applied by adding pallid witch flesh into the base coat mix. And we were limited to using only a medium dry brush here, mainly because of the aforementioned super smart move with the ruins. If they are separate, however, a larger dry brush will give you slightly better coverage over the brickwork. Increasing the amount of pallid witch flesh in the mix and continuing to dry brush over the brickwork again being super careful not to bleed out onto the finished areas of Damrod. Finally, a super light dry brush was applied by adding white scar into the overall mix. And there we are, Damrod, Lieutenant of Faramir's Rangers in Ithilien, finished and ready to stalk the underbrush, unseen and hunting the enemy in service of the protection of Gondor. The recipe for the basing can also be found in our 5 minute basing tutorials playlist on the channel. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, as always please like and subscribe and share the video to help push the content out to more avid hobbyists and until next time guys, take care and as always, happy hobbying.